Alrighty, welcome back everyone. It is Laughing Games here. I'm back with another StarCraft 2 1 versus 1 bot AI cast. We have got ourselves what should be a good one here today. And I did not intentionally do this in which I was casting back-to-back -back veteran games. I was actually like, alright, I'll cast a random Cannonana game. And what do you know? We have veteran again. I mean, I definitely wanted to cast another one of its games, but I wanted to probably wait a little bit. I try not to cast the same bot too many times in a row. It's a big reason why I appreciate Merc more submitting his replays of uh, his bot, Ender, into the Discord channel all the time, but then it's like, ah, I don't want to cast the same bot all the time, so... Anyway, we have got ourselves a TVZ, but more importantly, a bot versus bot. Ladies and gentlemen, if you enjoy these AI casts, go ahead, slap that like button like it owes you money. And leave a comment down below saying more bots, more bagels, more boats, whatever it may be to feed the beast that is the YouTube algorithm. Then uh, consider becoming a YouTube member. If you want to support the channel, that's the best way to go about doing that. There's various perks and whatnot. Now, we have got Command Center first for Veteran. And I believe I've seen this matchup between these two before, or I've at least seen Cannon Anna go up against a CC first. And so, just a normal TVZ opening between these two. Well, I say that as a second Rax is on the way for Veteran, but as far as a Command Center first goes, two Rax opening is normal. I wonder if we'll see Veteran go for its Reapers that we saw in the previous game against Benbot. I'd really like to see that, actually. For now, though, Cannonana, it goes for the early pool, but it doesn't get aggressive with it ever. It just sends those lings all over the map, scouting whatnot. Really speaks to the work the bot authors put into to try and get that information. It's probably going to give us a natural base tag soon, if I'm not mistaken. Let's see. Does it say natural? It says marines. There we go, expo. So Cannon Anna getting the information that it wants to see. Double orbitals on the way for veteran. That's the beautiful that's the beautiful feeling if you're a Terran that goes CC first. You get to go, yes, let me drop two mules two minutes into the game. It's really awesome. Now double Reaper is on the way for veteran. So it is gonna be going for this play. I really, really like to see this Reaper play. We don't see as much aggressive early game play out of the bots as I'd like. That's because naturally the bots that are more well-rounded climb to the top, much like pro StarCraft. But the fact that Veteran is a good bot that goes for this kind of shenanigans, that's something that I really enjoy. It is only going for two of those, but then it goes for a third base command center on location. Just being incredibly greedy here against a Zerg. That's unheard of in a human versus Zerg game. Veteran is saying, I do what I want though, and lo and behold, it does. It's now got those two Reapers poking and prodding a little bit. Don't think they'll get too much done though. You really need three Reapers to take on a queen. Even that's a little bit, well, takes a bit of time. Veteran though, behind this, getting up bunkers galore. Its natural base is being harassed a little bit. The Marines are coming in to save the day. That SCV elects to run away from that Ling, but now it's time it gets back to work. Another SCV is sent on out to work on that bunker. That SCV <laughs> had to go home. Says, nope, I'm done for the day. As it goes <laughs> and survived a Zerglic attack. We have these two Reapers still being a bit of a pain. Drones getting pulled aggressively against Reapers. Not something you want to see. Cannonana is making roaches behind this. However, economically, Cannonana's build may be hindering it a little bit here. The early, the early pool, the roaches, just the fact that it doesn't get anything done. We see a Terran bot that's got a third base done. Not too far behind the Zerg. And it's not too far behind on workers either. So, Cannon Ann is making these roaches, but it's definitely going to need to get some damage done with them. Or at least it should need to. Otherwise, I'm worried that Veteran is just going to eclipse Cannon Anna. Cannon Anna's got a fourth on the way, so that's good to see at least. However, that Terran machine is already starting to, already starting to whir up. That starport's on the way. We see Tech Lab reactor on the rack so it can start making lots of units potentially get combat shield stim on the way 
I'm wondering about tank production too. That's a big factor. Cannon Anna with just roaches has a hard time dealing with mass tanks. Now, a raven's on the way for veteran. Its economy is still just powering up. Like, it's just saturating that third base. So it's going to be another minute or two before we really see the effects of that. But we will see the effects of that. Now, Cannon Anna, it's spreading a little bit of creep. Definitely needs to keep on that. Widow mine, widow mine burrowed tag being put in chat. Love it when bot authors do that. We also see the lings burrowed all over the map for Cannon Anna. Beautiful play by the Zerg. Well, beautiful programming by the programmer to really hinder bots that want to try and expand. And it does a great job with that. Now we see roaches engaging these non-upgraded marines. Should go pretty well for the roaches. They can just burrow and hide their head in the sand, at least until this raven joins up on the front. But even then, I think there's probably enough roaches to take on these unupgraded marines. 10 marines against 21 roaches. A tank is crossing the map, potentially. Okay, the tank just came out now, so it's going to be a while before it joins up with this. So, veteran... If I had the tank with this, I'd say it was scary for Cannon Anna, but it is just basically non-upgraded marines against queens and roaches. And that really works out well in the early game for the Zerg. Later on is when the Roaches tend to fall off. It looks like Combat Shield is done for the Marines, but that's still not enough to overcome the uh, the Roach numbers. Roaches take a shot and then unburrow, but this is where things can get problematic. A veteran just keeps this attack going. This tank is really going to turn the tide of things. It's, yeah, now Cannon Anna is just going to start eating tank shots after tank shots. And oh boy, I am... Getting concerned already for Cannon Anna. Veteran, it's got the 70 workers out. It's got the mass production. One tank isn't the end of the world, but it's when one tank's joined up by another and another. Fortunately, it is a cyclone or two on the way, so it is just the one tank for now. Cannon Anna, though, still in a bit of a defensive position, really being pushed back by these tanks. The Marines doing a good job buffering, protecting this tank. The roaches of no choice but to retreat and burrow, regen their HP. They're at least getting that efficiency. So they're not as inefficient as, say, a regular human player's roaches. But still, I mean, look at that. This tank just shooting and shooting and shooting away. And this is the effect of one tank. Just wait till there's another one. And one e another is being produced. Reaper grenades being used in the midst of all this chaos as well. Is there roach speed? No, there is not for these roaches. There is a lair done, yeah, but no, uh, no Glee of Reconstitution. That is just on the way now for Cannon Anna, so that will definitely help these roaches take better engagements. We see Veteran packing up and leaving, actually. That's really significant. As, uh, that's gonna give Cannon Anna a moment to breathe, but of course that means next time Veteran comes on in, there's gonna be more tanks with this, likely. Where's that second siege tank? Alright, sieged up at the natural. This is giving Cannon Anna time to invest in tech infestation pit spire on the way. It is probably the best Zerg bot when it comes to infester usage. And it's almost maxed out as well. Like, it has made a crazy number of roaches. Crazy number of queens as well. So, its position isn't too terrible. It's now looking to put the hurt on Veteran. We'll see if it can break this position or not. Glue Reconstitution is about 10 seconds away from completing, so it's going to eat tank shots very easily till then. And look at that. All of a sudden, that bio stims to life. And those roaches get pushed on out of there. The 1-1 one, one really showing for the bio. Hannah and Anna not having the roach speed also was significant. Now it's got that, so it's going on in once more. But the tank's in the defensive position. This is not enough roaches to break this. And I guess it really is the Queens eating up a lot of the supply for Cannon Anna. That means it doesn't quite have the number of roaches it needs to break a location like this. Now, if Cannon Anna can be the aggressor this game, prevent Veteran from getting an expansion, then things can really go its way. And so far it is doing that. No fourth base up for Veteran just yet. However, I get the feeling that these roaches will eventually overstay their welcome. They do go forth. A lot of them die. Lots of lings are being made for Cannon Anna. For <laughs> 40 Zerglings are on the way. Lings are getting upgrades too. A Hydra Den's coming on out. This aggression is not getting too much done, but it is definitely better for Cannon Anna. The fact that it's being the uh, aggressor as opposed to being on the receiving end of, of a tag climb. So, 
Now we see Tananana flooding lots of links out. This is going to allow the tanks to potentially deal some friendly fire to allow it to push forward with the roaches. It does get a tank there, then gets pushed back. We see vipers being tagged now, so those are being produced. Lings and roaches trading out against these marauders. And the game continues on. Veterans still not securing up another base. We really need to keep an eye on this main base. It's already halfway mined out, and all of a sudden... If it goes on for a minute or two too long, veteran not securing a base, it can run out of steam. Now, Cannonana definitely did overstay its welcome as the tides are turning, as the veteran is now pushing across the map. It's got four siege tanks with this army. It's actually got a battle cruiser as well. There is a plethora of queens to deal with this BC, however, so they should do well. Transfuses are a factor too. In goes Lings. Roach is going to try and break this location. The Lings are really in the face of that bio there. The tank's not getting too many big shots off just yet. Queen's stepping forward. The bio really is quite stim. The medivacs are overdrained at this point. Although I don't know if there's enough Queens to break this. There's no Roaches to support them and they do elect to retreat. That's because Cannonana is trying to defend against three tanks here. Vipers are moving forward. Getting zoned out by the Vikings it looks like. Can they break this location? I mean... A blinding cloud, all those tanks would be dead. We do see Cannonana lose a base towards the north, though, while it's having a hard time engaging this. There we go. The blinding cloud usage from a bot. It's incredible to see for Cannonana. Allows it to break that tank line. The programming that must have gone in there is incredible. That being said, Cannonana is still in a very rough position as it's now defending against the BCs. Killing off those tanks was a big victory for it. Another BC flies forward. Is it going to turn around? It does just barely get away that's that's gotta hurt for the zerg if canadan had feelings they would be feelings of rage at that point now we have got canadan making corruptor still, still getting lots of upgrades it's got five bases to its name veterans still locked on three bases not able to secure up a fourth base just yet cyclone locking onto some of these units as the trades continue on canadan Gonna try and re-secure up a base. We'll see if it pushes its creep out any further. A Hydra eats a grenade as that Reaper is still alive. Up to six kills. Well done, Mr. Reaper. Medivac's going down as Cannonan is looking to push out. Be the aggressor again. It is maxed out. And we are seeing Veteran run out of literal gas here. <laughs> and, and I guess the metaphorical gas too as its supply is down 50 to the Zerg. Cannonana is still producing lots of stuff. Corruptors able to help work on those battle cruisers. The BCs do have okay upgrades, so they're fairly tanky. But we saw those tanks go down earlier on, and the tanks really are the thing that Cannonana struggles to deal with. Veterans making another tank here. It's got out three, but yeah, it really needs a lot of tanks to make to make a defense happen and the fact that it never secured up another base just goes to show how strong Cannonana's strategy is of burrowing those zerglings. I don't know if it was actually trying to take another base. It definitely should have anyway. We see tanks sieging up once more but veterans really running out of supply here. Hydra stepping forward getting onto that tank. Auto turrets helping on out. Missile turrets shooting away at corruptors. That's an uncomfortable feeling and that really is the main last mining base for veteran and if it didn't secure a base in the past 10 minutes i get the feeling it's not going to secure it now and so i won't lie it's good to see Cannonana be able to overcome the terran tank problem with a great blinding cloud like that with a somewhat swift engagement corruptors are flying all over the place trying to get whatever pickoffs they can at this point trades any trades for the zerg bot are good as just it's got the it's got the resources whereas veteran doesn't cannon Anna also hasn't been trading too inefficiently this game so that's really cool to see five infestors are now on the way in come those hydras trading out against the bio once more and yeah the tanks really are the make or break for the terran and there just wasn't enough of them for veteran i mean I'm sure this game would have continued on if it was able to secure up another base. Of course it didn't though. And I do wonder if that was because of the burrowed zergling or just whether the bot author said nope, three base it for the victory. But previously we saw 
veteran take a lot of expansion, so I imagine it is part of those birdlings. We see more great blinding clouds going down as Cannon Anna surges forward. Beautifully done by those by just by the author, able to make make the call to say, alright, Viper, identify those tanks, go in. Probably some sort of preemptive check to make sure that it actually has units nearby that can engage. And then probably like a check to be like, okay, those units are blind and clouded. Attack now with whatever it has. So beautiful play there. Veteran loses that command center, and it's it's really great to see that there is some level of chance in these bot games. Like we can cast one game between two bots, whereas it just gets wrecked. Then we can cast another, and it's all of a sudden just going the other way. So that's really cool to see. Veteran, yeah, out of money, out of time, as those Hydras with their plus three missile attacks shred through everything. Those poor SCVs will all die. Ladies and gentlemen, hit that like button if you haven't already. Join the Discord, consider becoming a YouTube member. Leave a comment down below. If you want to see more of these bot games, if you want to see pro games or any other StarCraft content, let me know too. As these Hydras just shoot and shoot and shoot. Bit of a traffic jam, but... Cannon Anna has all the time in the world at this point, as there is too many Vax and two Widow Mines hanging out. 